Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Anime Theory, the show that seems to have an unhealthy addiction to talking about shows that have lots of murder. Probably not healthy, but eh, it'll be fine, hopefully. By the way, I might as well warn you that this video will not only contain spoilers for Elf and Lead, but also may contain some clips that lay on the darker spectrum. I'll do my best to make the viewing experience as comfortable as possible, but this is Elf in Lead. I'm not sure how much it can actually fix. Anyways, figured a warning would be nice. So, let's talk Elf in Lead. Specifically, let's talk about the series' brilliantly adorable psychopaths, the Declonius. For those of you not in the know, the Declonius are a mutated species of humans. The two biggest differences are the two horns on their head that look a bit like cat ears. You know, kind of cute. Also, they have these extendable invisible arms that can literally slice a person in half. That... that's not so cute. Or is it? This species is portrayed throughout the series as a set of natural-born killers. Apparently, their goal from the onset is to destroy all of humanity, and replace them with more and more Declonius. And of course, because humans are being threatened with complete and utter extinction, of course most people weren't too thrilled with that. It doesn't matter how cute they are, I'd rather have all of my body parts remain intact, thank you very much. Now, as repeated throughout the series by a number of people, especially our main female Lucy, the Declonius are apparently bent on destroying the human race. There's no way to avoid it, it's inevitable. They have to kill humans. Well, I'm sorry Lucy, but that's a bunch of malarkey. No, seriously, Lucy is completely and utterly wrong. There's no way that the Declonius are naturally forced to kill humans. This is merely a misconception. So, dive in with me, will you, as we finally answer the age-old debate about the true nature of this adorable monster of a species. So, let's look at Lucy herself. She is the one claiming that it's an instinct after all. And from all the evidence the show provides, that's completely untrue. You see, this series shows Lucy as a child, long before the events of the main story. Before a certain event involving a dog, she's completely fine, for the most part. She never threatens to kill people, she never fantasizes about it, and this is with a group of generic copy and paste bullies going after her. She doesn't break until later, after the same bullies from earlier decide to literally murder a dog just to torment her. Side note, these kids were likely to turn into psychopaths. Animal abuse is the first step after all, so personally, what Lucy did seemed to be a good idea overall. Note, though, that this was the first instance of her killing someone. And while some may say that it's a bit abrupt, meaning what she says about it being instinctual is true, I'd argue the exact opposite. People have been researching what causes people to commit murder, and child murderers usually come from past neglect or abuse. In fact, a large majority of them come from households where the parents are violent and sometimes even abusive with the child. And Lucy? Well, let's just say things aren't too great for her. Not only does she not really have any serious parental figure to look up to, she's borderline ignored by anyone that could help. Also, her horns make her an easy target for abuse from the other children, meaning that she often attracts negative attention from everyone else. It's so bad that a dog was her only friend for quite a chunk of time. So, she already fits the criteria well. One other aspect that makes her murderous tendencies more expected is that, well, she's a child. Most children don't exactly have a firm understanding of the consequences of any action they take. Heck, some children who murdered people went to school just an hour later, and Lucy would have even less of a grasp on why murder is wrong. Remember, she has no one to teach her anything, much less the consequences of murder. She's in a situation where there's no way she could fully grasp the full situation, so killing for her wouldn't be a problem. Add in some literal psychopaths killing a dog, something that would mentally scar any kid who saw it, and you have a perfect spark to set off this ticking time bomb of emotion. Without being able to think, she instantly killed all of them. After this, it was all the easier for her to become desensitized to it. I mean, she's literally knocked off four kids. Combine that with her already screwed up mind lacking in any understanding of consequences, and it all makes it easier for her to go off more and more people. But don't worry, there's more evidence to be had. You see, the series shows us right front and center another Declonius who completely breaks what Lucy says, Nana. From the onset, she's portrayed as the peaceful Declonius, one who won't kill any humans regardless of the circumstance. Clearly, a peaceful Declonius would get rid of any argument that Lucy would have. If they were forced to kill humans, then how exactly would one manage to forego that problem and be able to spare people? 
Well, there is one argument against this, and normally it'd be a really big one. At one point in the series, Nana gets very close to killing someone, even getting urged by a voice from within her head. Now normally, this would be proof against this theory. Clearly, something is telling Nana to murder, and this same event occurs for Lucy at a young age as well, where she hears a voice encouraging her to slaughter people. I say it normally would be proof against this theory because, well, it's really not. What they are experiencing is a phenomenon by the name of L'Appel du Vide, or in English, the Call of the Void. You ever stepped near a particularly large cliff and had a thought akin to, I could jump off right now? Ever been driving around and then had a sudden thought about crashing a car into others? Ever been holding a knife and thought, I could kill someone right now, very quickly before immediately discrediting the thought? Well, what you've experienced is the Call of the Void. Whether it be a thought to instill fear in the person, or to potentially heighten their senses, this phenomenon is felt by many people throughout the world at one point or another. Not just psychopaths or suicidal people, but normal everyday people. So what these Declonius are experiencing isn't actually some other entity telling them to kill. It's simply their own brain warning them of the potential actions they could take. It's up to them to act on that urge, and while Lucy certainly breaks under the pressure at some point, Nana never actually does give in to this urge. So the problem isn't the Declonius themselves, it's Lucy. So the question is then, why would Lucy continue to reiterate this? Why would Lucy continue to tell everyone around her that her purpose is to wipe out all of humanity? Well, that's because to continue living on with herself, she has to say that. She herself needs to be convinced of it. Here, let me explain it a bit more with an example. A psychologist by the name of Pascal Molenbergs at Monash University in Melbourne, located in the nation of Australia, decided to do an experiment. He gathered 48 different people to participate and then asked them to be subjected to functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI scans, while watching three separate videos. One showed a soldier shooting an enemy soldier, another showed a soldier shooting an innocent civilian, and the final one showed nothing being shot as a control. At the end, the soldiers were asked on a scale of 1 to 7 how guilty they felt, and the orbital frontal cortex was focused on in the scans, the area of the brain focused on morality. Expectedly, the people felt more guilty when a civilian was shot, and the scans also supported this. Why exactly was this the case though? It's still murder, so wouldn't it have the same effect? Well no, because in the case of the enemy soldier being shot, the action was easier to justify in the mind of the subjects. Murder becomes a lot easier on a person's mind if there's a reason behind it. Whether it be for religious beliefs, political beliefs, enemies on the other side, or any cause the person killing is fighting for, it becomes much easier to justify the killing that way. It's a bit harder to regret your actions in the same way if you also believe the actions were justified in some kind of way. It's the same reason why Light is able to go on killing criminals in the anime Death Note. Because he's able to justify it as making the world a better place, None of the deaths have any serious negative effect on him, and Lucy is following the exact same path. She needs to justify her actions in some way. By claiming it's for some greater purpose, she can convince herself that all of this slaughter is justified. That all of this is uncontrollable, so she can't necessarily be held responsible for her actions. She needed to fool herself into this narrative she's crafted, otherwise the hundreds of murders she's committed will all weigh down on her conscience. Basically, she's using this as a thinly veiled excuse for her psychopathic actions. The Declonius are not automatically murderers bent on the destruction of mankind. They are simply human beings with some minor mutations that just so happen to have killer ghost hands. What Lucy says is a complete and utter lie. From the proof of Nana being a peaceful Declonius, to her contradictory past, to the many scientific explanations for her initial murders and her later actions, it's clear that what Lucy is saying is a bunch of lies. A bunch of lies Lucy needs to tell herself are true to justify the amount of people she kills. She's not a poor, unfortunate soul stuck in a situation that she has no control of. She's a psychopath, lying to continue her thinly veiled murder spree. But hey, that's just my crazy theory. I hope you enjoyed it. And hey, if you liked this, why not subscribe, and hey, suggest some anime to do theories on in the comments below. I'm gonna start taking a lot more requests, and so the popular ones will likely get picked. So hey, why don't you request one? I'll probably end up making a video on it. Anyways, see you guys in the next video. See you later.